Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I'm tackling these roses behind me here. I'll show them to you in a minute, but the topic today is winter sanitation. How you should take care of plants in the winter in your greenhouse. Now this is focused more on the idea of running a nursery business, but these general concepts apply across to anybody who's overwintering plants in containers. Let me show you their condition. At risk of putting my nursery not in the best light, I will show you the mess that happens during the winter. And these are roses that I tried to sell this year, and they are leftovers. I have a whole bunch of them, so I'm bringing them back again for market next year. And you can see that some of them have dropped a lot of their leaves. I'll show you this guy here is more or less dropped its leaves. Maybe you have a few hanging on. And other ones are more the semi-evergreen type that have held on to their leaves. And the mess I'm talking about is this on the ground. It's dropped a whole bunch of its old leaves. You can see in the pots I have a whole bunch of moss. In places I have weeds and some more weeds there. And so I'm going to be doing a cleanup on this. And one of the reasons I'm doing that, I'm going to show you really quick here, is this problem here, black spot, is a disease that's carried by fungus and if I leave those leaves to just drop on the ground and then shoot back up, the point is that they will reinfect the new growth for the next year. It's not just black spot I'm concerned with. Aphids will overwinter live on active leaves and stems or lay eggs on buds and fallen leaves. If it stays mild enough, thrips and whitefly will take shelter on those standing weeds or in the case of the thrips, overwinter in the top layers of the soil. Some spider mites overwinter in the top layer of the soil as well, while others lay eggs on fallen leaves. As for diseases, there's leaf spot, both fungal and bacterial, powdery mildew, and even rust that will overwinter on infected foliage. Slugs and snails will definitely take advantage of the moist fallen plant debris as well. Here's an example of one that has a big weed at the base of it here. Just to make it a little easier to handle, I'm going to do some of my pruning right up front here and I've done a video on winter pruning of roses before so I won't spend a lot of time going over that material but basically I'm just seeing if I can improve the form of it and keep it at a marketable size and easy for handling like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull it right out of its pot and have a look at what's here. This top inch of soil I'm just going to go ahead and break it all off and get all of the crud off of there. And see, now I'm down into roots, which is good. And I can look at the condition of the roots of the plant and I can see that it's in good condition, maybe a touch dry. And now all of that's off of there. So what I will do now that I've taken this and I've cleaned all of the debris off of there, I'll just push this debris off to the side here into my bin and Maybe I'll do another one here, just to show you. And again, just look at how much leaf debris and crap is at the top of this pot. So I'm gonna pull all that off of there. And the moss and the weeds and everything, and just get it off of there. And on this one here, again, I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a winter prune as well just to get it into good condition for sale next year. This is Robin Hood, it will rebloom, and so I don't have to worry about how much I take off there, and that's clean. And if there are any that still have foliage on it, I'm either going to have to strip that foliage off by pulling it back on the petiole, or I have to choose to cut off that section and probably a combination of both in this case. And if the soil was quite dry, I'm gonna throw it in a bucket here and give it a soak because I probably won't be handling these again, even to water until the spring. And now with all that crud cleaned off, I'm just going to top dress the top of the pot with some fresh bark mulch, just to maintain that moisture level and put a new layer on there to suppress any weed seeds or anything that's in the top of that pot. And after that, a quick sweep of the floor, and I'll show you how the roses look now. So from the way they looked before, now you have roses that are trimmed back with all of the 
diseased leaves off, all of the weeds off, all of the moss off, freshly chop dressed with bark mulch, and ready to roll into the next season without carrying over all that disease and all the pests of the previous season. The best timing for this work is after the leaves have started to fall off the plants. It makes your job a little bit easier if you don't have to strip them all off yourself. But of course you do have to make sure to leave yourself enough time to get it done before all the new leaves start emerging in the spring. So for my timing here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's December and January where I tackle this work, hoping to have it done before the buds start to break in February. All right, that does it for this video. If you have any questions about overwintering plants or anything to do with the nursery business, please leave those in the comments below.